Hey guys, Dark with Cyclone FPV. I just got done doing a video on the QX7 and the X Lite uh, update cable that we offer for a FrySky product. And I now need to do one for the um, X90 Plus. So I've got my X90 Plus sitting right here. Uh, and I uh, figured I'd just show you real quick on the cable part of it. Um, and what I discussed, this is the actual cable I just made for the, um, for the uh, QX7. Sorry, for the QX7 video. Let me kind of swap spots here. And there you go. Now you can see it, okay? And so what I was explaining in that video was that usually the cables are going to be black, red, and yellow. But unfortunately, I don't always have black, red, and yellow combinations. So I put up on the website... Um, uh, a, I'm going to try to get you to this website real quick and let's see if that'll work. See if I can make this work. Okay, so here's on the website, right? And then I'm going to just go, I think it's, if I go back one, I might be able to find it. Okay, so here's the cables right here. And we were looking at this one earlier. And I will, I have not updated this page yet. I will after this video is done. But on the QX7, I started putting this little table here that'll tell you different color combinations and how they apply. So you can have uh, black, uh, red, and yellow. You can end up with gray, orange, and green. It's all going to be the same, but if you happen to get one of these different colors, then you'll at least know uh, what what order it goes in, right? So on this, in this case right here, uh, because I don't have black, red, and yellow right now, I've run out of those. I use uh, gray, orange, and green. So if you have gray, orange, and green for me, it'll always be the same, all right? So it's just a color replacement, but the same purpose. Now, the one thing about the um, the one thing about the X90 Plus is it does not update the same way that the uh, X Lite does, right? The pin, the pin order is different, okay? So whereas the X Lite is ground, uh, uh, positive, and signal, or S port, um, the, uh, the X90 Plus is positive ground and S port. And I'll show you on our, on our tutorials page, which I did this one a couple days ago, uh, right here under this area. Okay, so I put the, um, this is, this page actually is going to be good to follow because it's going to keep getting updated with more links and stuff. But here's a picture of the inside of your um, X9D uh, Plus here. And so you've got five ground and S port, right? So to look at the pins here, um, sorry, let me get this kick stand out of the way. So we're talking about this area right here. All right. And so the cable, I need to put some here. So these, there we go. Let's just leave it like that for now. Okay. So, uh, so the cable, as you can tell, the QX7 cable won't work because when it goes in, you're going to end up with ground, positive, and, and, and signal, and it needs to be opposite. So for the sake of just making this a quicker video, I'm just going to go ahead and pull these pins real quick. Okay. Now you can do one of two things. If you want to mentally remember, I mean, I guess if I didn't pull the pins, then I would sit here and plug this in. And then when I go to plug it into my receiver, like the, X, uh, the R9MM or the R9 Mini that I was using in my example, you would basically swap. The, the risk, though, is that you you forget or somehow make a mistake there and then it gets all screwed up. So uh, if you want to though, you can, but I'm going to go ahead and if you get the cables from me, they're going to be shipped to match properly and not, not expecting you to make some adjustments. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap these two, right? And so I'm going to lift those tabs up and I'm only doing this because there's no sense in me making another cable when I can swap these real quick, right? Uh, and kind of show you guys, if you have one cable, this is what you can do if you want to swap the other. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to move the positive to the outside where it belongs. And we're going to put the ground to the middle where it belongs, right? Now, this now lines up perfectly uh, like this. And we now match the wire diagram and the way that these have to go. All right, so assuming this is right, and then, you know, the next thing is that on your, uh, and I showed this in the video I just did, uh, let me put this here. So Welcome to it, the TX. apparently I just turned that on. Okay, so um, you notice Good it, morning. right, you notice your pins here. Uh, and if you're holding this the same way, then you're going to see that you have uh, right here, positive ground and signal. So let's go ahead and hook that in accordingly. And I'm just going to stand this up because I don't want this thing pushing on any more switches. So we're going to take positive as a second from the bottom. Let's go ahead and plug that in this way. All right. Then we're going to alternate so that the pins can fit properly. And we're going to go grounded in the center. All right. And then we're going to alternate again so that it fits one more time. And we're going to put our S port on the second from the top. And there we go. Now on my transmitter, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and fold this down just a little bit, okay? And I am going to, and you can see it here, blink in, right? So I am going to go ahead now and get ready to write this, all right? So bear with me a second. We should be pretty much ready to go. So I just need to load the firmware, so let me hold page down. Whoops, let me hold menu down, then press page. Go down to my firmware, and oh, I thought I had, I think it's here, isn't it? Yeah, so R9 Mini right here. All right, my structure on this one's a little different, so I'm going to hit this one, and I'm going to do the FCC. Okay, I'm going to hit OK, hold it down, and I'm going to, uh, no, that's not, that can't be right. So let me change this real quickly. Uh, I need to readjust. 
adjust these real quick. So there's one. And then put this next one. There's two. There we go. And there's three. All right, now I'm going to turn my radio off real quick. Turn it back Welcome on. Welcome to OpenTX. Okay. Morning. Okay, so there we go. And now I'm just going to go ahead and go menu, and go page, menu, sorry, then page, go down to firmware, go down to Spry Sky firmware, go down to R9 mini. There we go. Hold it. And then we're going to flash external. And we're going to be writing. Okay. And there you can see it. Uh oh, I think I moved it and screwed it up. Sorry. Let me do this again because, uh, Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tell it to flash. Wait, on right, mini, there we go. And we're gonna flash external, hit enter. And it's gonna start writing to the receiver right now, as you can see, the lights are blinking and everything's gonna be going. Sorry, there's a little bit of a hiccup there um, uh, because I moved it and, you, and I would probably have to tell you, don't move it, okay? Just leave everything still because you risk the, something like that happening. But in either case, so uh, on your cable, you will have positive ground and signal, right? And that's gonna be the difference between that and the QX7, which is ground positive and signal. So as long as you know that, you can make your own cable or swap them out, or you can get one from me and it's gonna come that way. But uh, there you go, I hope that helps. We're just gonna wait for this to uh, get done. And you'll notice that what's different on here, and it is something that um, I, I, I'm not sure if it's firmware related, I don't know, this is something I probably need to look into, but it did catch me off guard, is I'm not used to the receiver actually kicking on until I tell it to start writing. That is something that I've not seen and so when I, on the last video where I said I always turn it off before I disconnect it um, and always turn it off before I connect it, uh, that's the reason why. So you do end up with little hiccups like this where the thing will power actually power on uh, without you writing to it. Uh, the QX7 did not do that in our last video. So just make sure to use caution, which is have your pins in first, then turn it on, and then turn it off before you remove your pins again. That way you don't accidentally do something like short it out. Okay, so we're going to wait for this to get done writing. Clock sticking, so I'm hurrying. And uh, other than that, I think that pretty much answers everything. This thing's been flashed a ton now, this uh, R9 Mini, because it got used in both videos, but it worked out well. And um, you can uh, check out the website there to find uh, a cable if you need one. All right, so let me click OK and get out of here. Now you see, I'm st it's still blinking though, right? So it's still getting power. Uh, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and out and turn it off. And I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it. And I have a feeling the reason it's doing that, and it just dawned on me now why. I, I don't know why I didn't think about this earlier. Um, it's doing that because on this particular port, I have the R9M activated. I don't know why I didn't think about that earlier, but that's why. So just in case you do what I did, which is take the R9M out to update your receiver, just know that you're still going to be getting power because you told the radio that the R9M was being used. All right, and uh, you know, just to kind of show you, I, I, I don't know why that slipped my mind, but it was kind of catching me off guard I guess so I'm gonna plug this in real quick I'm gonna show you something a little different just to show you what I'm talking about so on the model that we have selected right on my default model that I selected which maybe for ice guy should change this if you're in firmware updates maybe they should turn off I don't know maybe not whatever so I'm gonna turn this back on Welcome and to you're gonna see what's happening here so as was happening before let me click Good exit morning. okay so you can see that we have light right here right and that's because if I go to menu and I look at my model um, you can see here that my R9M is activated, right? That's the FCC R9M. So if I exit this and I go to my menu button and I go, let's say, to my RXSR and I tell it I want to select that one. Switch warning. Okay, so now because my R9M is not the one set to get power, the R9, uh, the signal is not happening. But with that, now with no signal, uh, no power going, if I was to go back, and I won't make you watch this part, but I'm going to show you just... The beginning of it. If I go back to my firmware, go back to my FrySky firmware, firmware, whoops, go back to my mini, and then there we go. And I'm gonna say flash external. Okay, so um, it's gonna start updating here, right? And it's gonna start writing, and now I'm getting power, but when I'm done, it will stop. Okay, so that's something that I didn't even think about that I just happened to be checking out while doing this video, which is if you've got your module set, if you've got your model, uh, your default model when you turn on your radio to be the R9M or whatever it is in your um, in your module bay, then you're automatically going to start feeding power, which means if you plug in your receiver, it's going to automatically get power. So keep that in mind, okay? And, and maybe take caution to not have that 
model selected when you start doing your updates. Other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. This is just going to basically write the firmware again like we just did. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up. You can always email me. There it is at tark at cyclonefpv.com. Uh, I would ask that you please help support us by following our, or no, wait, subscribing to our YouTube channel, which is right there. And then, hold on, I got one more. And then make sure to like us and follow us on Facebook right there. Other than that, guys, if you have any questions, ow. If you have any questions, hit me up. If not, uh, stay flying. God bless. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>